Hello and welcome to the ongoing uh, building blog of the Flare SE5A. So an update, a um, few jobs I've been busy with. Um, I've strapped up the strutting here, added the cross braces, but the main purpose of this short video is to discuss the application of the markings to this model. I've decided to make this a tribute to one of the air aces of the Royal Flying Corps, and that was um, Mick Mannix. Um, he flew with 74 Squadron, and their identif identification call markings consists of a roundlet, um, letter A, and three white rectangles on the rear part of the fuselage. So this is where uh, the problems began. It re this whole process has reminded me a little bit about the old joke that goes something like this. When a fella asks an old bloke how to get to a pub, his answer is, well, if I was you, I wouldn't be starting from here. And that's been very much my experience of trying to put these stencils on or make stencils for this build. The first problem is that the conventional idea is that you draw out the shapes you want, put some acetate over the surface and then use masking tape of various types. This is frog, this is a Tamiya tape. Apply it to the stencil, to the acetate and then peel it off when you've cut it out and put it on the model. The problem with that is that it proves almost impossible to remove it from the acetate without destroying the stencil that you've cut out or it misshapes or stretches. If you apply it directly to the model, of course the issue then is lining it up and getting it accurate. Straight rectangular shapes weren't a problem. The roundlets were a nightmare and in the end I resorted to hand painting them. And this is a reveal of the letter A. We'll see how much bleed uh, I've actually got on the model. It's almost impossible to avoid because the fabric nature of the solar text means that the paint creeps underneath to a certain extent. There's a way around that, and that's to spray the base colour first around the stencil, so any creep is the same colour as the background, then to spray the white. In this case, I haven't. I think I'll touch it up by hand. So let's see what we've got when I remove this stencil and see how it goes. So far, so good. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky especially when I'm trying to hold it one-handed. So far, so good. Yep, yeah, that looks okay to me. It gets a grip. It doesn't half get a grip. Let's see if I can remove that with a carefully with a blade. Looking good. Looking good. I can live with that. Let's see about these here. Yeah, that looks nice. Last little piece. Come on, let's. There you go. Oh, well, quite happy with that. This little piece here was just to hold the original paper template in place while well, I taped around it. There you go. So there's a little bit of bleed there, which I'll, I'll remove. But there's the markings now, as they stand. So overall, I'm quite pleased with that. Um, a very, very frustrating process. 
But I think I've learned a lot. Um, you just haven't got to give up with these things and keep trying. So I hope that was informative. Lots of frustration, but it's starting to come together now.